O matisi doza bolingo a bonzambeo Na mote mananga mwana yesu Pona li solo nangala yo masia yesu Maloba ye zanga te onzamba lole Je suis prêt à plaider la folie de mon amour Pona yesu nandimi na bela taliboma Naboye nazala komplisa li bebi nanga moko Asi a yesu e sunga nanga mote mae na vande pa yo zali C'est lui le seul Dieu, c'est le vrai Dieu, c'est le Dieu qui va vous aider vers la vie, il va vous montrer le chemin à suivre, c'est le Dieu qui veut votre salut, et dans le salut on a beaucoup de choses. Hein. to it <laughs> because if you missed it you missed it okay so we're going to go into our second bad girl and the second bad girl we'll be talking about today is Lot's wife okay so I'm pretty sure many of us are familiar with the story of Lot's wife um, in the end she turned into salt okay so the location of the story is found in the book of Genesis chapter 19 I'm going to read from verse 1 from my version over here. And like I mentioned yesterday, the two versions I'm mostly going to be reading from are the CJD version, which is the Complete Jewish Bible, as well as the Amplified version. So if your version is different, it's not a big deal. Verse 1 says, The two angels came to Sodom that evening, when Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. Lot saw them, got up to greet them, and prostrated himself on the ground. Okay, so that's what the first verse says. The one key thing I want you guys to retain from this verse is where Lot was sitting that day. He was sitting at the gate. In those times, the people that sit at the gate are the people that have a high social status. So the people that are considered, it's a place of honor. So pretty much everybody that has honor will be sitting at the gate. So that insinuates that he was someone of pretty high ranking, and this was, a, we can imagine that if you have high ranking, you have money, you have a nice house, you have nice belongings, etc. Verse 2 says, he said, here now my lords, please come over to your servant's house, spend the night, wash your feet, get up early and go on your way. No, they answered, we'll stay in the square, but he kept pressing them, so they went home with him and he made them a meal, baking matzah for their supper, which they ate. So this just shows how accustomed to greeting, I would say, important guests Lot was. So he was, he was already accustomed to hosting important people, probably as, uh, to deal with the fact that he was an important person himself. Verse 4, But before they could go to bed, the men of the city surrounded the house, young and old, everyone from every neighborhood of Sodom. They called Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to stay with you tonight? Bring them out to us. We want to have sex with them. Lot went out to them and stood in the doorway, closing the door behind him, and said, Please, my brothers, don't do such a wicked thing. Look here, I have two daughters who are virgins. Please let me bring them out to you, and you can do with them what seems good to you. But don't do anything to these men, since they are guests in my house. Okay, so here Lot calls the Sodomites his brothers. Okay, that means he considers himself one of them. And we all know the people of Sodom, they were not exemplary people, they were not people that were good, but Lot considers himself one of them by referring to them as his brothers. In other translations, it reads his friends. He then proceeds to offer his own daughters with no remorse, showing just how integrated in these wicked things he was, because I don't think any father would just give up his daughters and put his guests over his own family, but Lot did, okay? That's what happens when you are surrounded by wicked people, bad company corrupts good morals. Verse nine, the men shout, stand back. This guy came to live here, and now he's decided to play judge, 
for that will deal worse with you than with them. So they crowded in on Lot to them, to him, and led them, leaving them outside the city. So why are you hesitating? You're te they're telling you your life is at risk, yet you hesitate to be helped to leave the city. Okay? What was he hesitating about? His wife was with him. His daughters were with him. So what was it that he could not leave behind that made him hesitate, that the angels had to grab him forcefully and bring him out of the city for his own good? So my options that I'm thinking it could be are, one, his house his stuff in the house, his lifestyle, his social ranking, his money, his popularity. Like what else could it be? You have no family there. All your family's coming with you. Your sons-in-law, they disrespected you by pretty much laughing in your face saying that you were not telling the truth. What is it that you're, you're, you're holding the plane? But escape to the hills. Otherwise, you will be swept to it. Lot said to them, please know my Lord. Here your servant has already found favor in your sight, and you have shown me even greater mercy by saving my life. But I can't escape to the hills, because I'm afraid the disaster will overtake me, and I will die. Look, there's a town nearby to flee to, and it's a small one. Please let me escape there. Isn't it just a small one? And that way I will stay alive. Why was Lot so stubborn? Why was he debating with the angel that came to save him? Through four very simple commands. Flee, don't look back, don't stop, get to the hills. However, he decided to go and find a compromise by going to a small town nearby. Those of you who were here yesterday probably remember my little acronym, flee to win, right? And one of those was no compromise. But what did Lot do? Compromised. He couldn't even just follow those four simple commands for his safety and for the safety of his family because he just could not let go. Not only could he not let go, he couldn't trust God that, he, that God will help him get to the hills. So he was using his own strength saying, for me, I can only get to the small town. I can't get to the hills. But who said it was you yourself who was going to provide the strength to get to the hills? Right? The angels replied, all right, I agree to what you have asked. I won't overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Hurry and escape to that place, because I can't do anything until you arrive there. For this reason, the city was named Zor, small. By the time Lot had come to Zor, the sun had risen over the land. Then Adonai caused sulfur and fire to rain down upon Sodom and Gomorrah from Adonai out of the sky. He overthrew those cities, the entire plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and everything growing in the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a column of salt. So well, this is aware of the command, of the commands. Don't look back, yet she looked back. I don't know how long she looked back for. I don't know if it was a, a glance, if it was a full on turn, but it doesn't matter because at the end she disobeyed to a simple, simple command. That's pretty much her story. <laughs> Sometimes we can think that we're committing a little sin, right? She thinks, you know, I'm just going to glance over my shoulder. Maybe God will notice that I glanced over my shoulder. No matter how small your sin is, God can see it, and God can judge it. God will judge it because he is a just judge. Don't think that you can do whatever you want and, oh, this is just a little white lie that we talked about yesterday. Or I'm just taking $2. No one's going to notice. Sin is sin. And then we see in James 2.10 that says, For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. Sin is sin. If you commit one little infraction, you sin. Just like if somebody is a serial killer and has murdered a million people, sin is sin. In God's eye, same thing. No distinction. Maybe she thought that she would get grace again this time, but there's a time for everything, like Abby said yesterday. There's a time for grace, and there's a time for judgment. The wages of sin is death. We talked about that yesterday. Romans 6.23, you sin, you die. Simple story. So what? You don't say, oh, just for old time's sake, let me just join in on the fun this time. No, let go, don't look back. When God calls us, 
follow him. Drop everything and follow him. Because he is going to give you more than you left behind. So now we're going to go into our second bad girl of today, third bad girl in general. And this one also doesn't have a name. There's a lot of them that don't have names. Her name or her title is Putty Fowl's Wife. Okay? Her um, title or AKA that we have given her is Bored to Sit. Okay? So you could be bored to death or you could be bored to sit. They're synonyms because sit leads to death. Okay? The location of the story is in Genesis 39, and verses 1 to 6, he made it clear that by committing the sin, he was going to be dishonoring God. He made it clear. That's the reason he was refusing. He didn't insult her. He didn't tell her, oh, you're so, you know, loose. No. He said, how could I do such a wicked thing? He did not call her a wicked person. He said he called the act itself wicked. This is the attitude that as Christians, we should have towards sinners, people that haven't yet embraced God. Don't judge them. Don't hate them. Hate the sin that they're committing, right? And don't go and insult them and target them. You're like this, you're like this, you're like this. No, you let them know what you're doing is dishonoring God. The act you're committing is dishonoring God. It's a wicked thing. I don't hate you. I love you, but the act that you're committing is wicked. Other versions say he refused to be near her. This is Joseph's wisdom coming out. Don't tempt temptation. Okay? Don't tempt temptation. You have to know when it's time to run. And that's exactly what Joseph did. He ran. Okay? Don't think, I'm strong enough. I can handle anything that gets thrown at me. No. You run. <laughs> okay? Run, and run fast, and oh wait, sentenced to prison. Note, Egyptians were not people that were, you know, soft. If the master wanted to have Joseph executed, he could But instead, he sentenced him to prison. If you're the right, God is not going to let harm happen to you. Amen. Right? And God had to make sure he would win, because he fleed. Flee to win, in our little blackboard yesterday. Flee to win, he won. Verse 20, faithful to God, he'll stay faithful to you. Okay? God could not let something bad happen to someone who, who you know, did what he had to do, did the right thing, defines that riddle. Out of the punishment came the blessing. Out of the bad comes the good. Right? If you do the right thing. Or else it'll just end up bad. Mrs. P tried. She failed. Just showing that even a bad girl, even as bad as Mrs. P, can never outsmart God. Nobody can outsmart God. Too much time on your hands like she had, plus the neglect of a husband that only cares about food, plus entitlement because, you know, she's like a master's wife, equals trouble. Okay? When we have nothing to do, what do we choose to do? Like, I want you to just think for a moment. When you have nothing to do, what do you do? What do you decide to, inter to entertain yourself with, right? When you have nothing to do. When we were in South Africa, uh, Prophet Banda had given us this little message and he asked us, when you have nothing to do, what do you do? What do you do to keep yourself busy? People were saying, I'll listen to music, I'll read a book, I'll watch a movie. And he's like, why do you do that? How many times can you just have nothing to do and just have nothing to do. We can't stand to not have anything to do. And the reason we can't stand to not have anything to do is because we don't. Rejoignez-nous les vendredis à partir de 18h30 pour les TQP. Les samedis à partir de 16h30 pour la session. Et les dimanches à partir de 10h30 pour le culte ainsi que le service de prière. Join us on Friday starting from 6.30 for Bible study. Saturdays starting at 4.30 for intercession prayer and on Sundays starting at 10.30 for the Sunday service as well as the prayer service. Car nous ne pouvons pas ne pas parler de ce que nous avons vu et entendu. For as for us, we cannot refrain from speaking of the things which we have seen and heard.